Over the past few years, we've gotten to know our next guest very well. He is a true warrior for liberty, a man who never stops fighting. He will take on any challenge to protect our constitutional freedoms, whether it's in the courts or on the floor of the United States Senate. They say everything's bigger in Texas, so please welcome a man whose defense of the Constitution is larger than life, Texas Senator Ted Cruz. the NRA. It's 2017, and Hillary Clinton is not the President of the United States. And Neil Gorsuch is a Supreme Court Justice. Elections matter. This election, in November of 2016, this election mattered, and I'm here today to say thank you. The men and women here and across the country won this election in 2016. This election, in many ways, was a referendum on the Supreme Court of the United States more so than any election we have seen in our lifetimes. Just over a year ago, Justice Scalia passed away. Justice Scalia was a lion of the law, a principled conservative giant. And his vacancy made this election in a very real way turn on what direction the American people wanted the Supreme Court to go. We all remember the debates between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. You may recall in particular one debate in which Hillary Clinton talked about the Heller decision, the most important decision Justice Scalia ever authored. And Hillary Clinton, you may recall, talked about Heller was really all about protecting toddlers. <laughs> well, I'll confess I know something about Heller, because I represented Texas and 30 other states in Heller defending the Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. And you know, it's striking. You can read the Heller majority opinion. You can read the dissent and you can search in vain. Do you know what word is found nowhere in Heller? Toddler. Toddler. Heller had absolutely nothing to do with toddlers. Instead, Heller concerned an individual, Dick Anthony Heller, a federal police officer who wanted to exercise his constitutional right to keep and bear arms in his home. And under the laws of the District of Columbia, it was a criminal offense. D.C. made it a crime for anyone to possess a handgun. And D.C. also made it a crime for anyone to possess an operable long gun, a rifle or a shotgun. Indeed, the laws in D.C. were so nutty that if you had, say, a shotgun in the closet with a trigger lock on it, and a criminal was breaking into your house, was crawling through the window to injure your children, and you took that shotgun and removed the trigger lock, you would have committed a crime in the District of Columbia. That's what Heller was about. It was about whether or not the Second Amendment means what it says. Hillary Clinton in this last election promised she would appoint justices who would overturn Heller. And it's worth pausing to reflect what that would mean. The position of the dissenters in Heller was not that some reasonable restrictions are sometimes permissible. The position of the dissenters in Heller was far more radical than that. Four justices on the Supreme Court said the Second Amendment does not protect any individual right to keep and bear arms whatsoever. Their position was it is only a, quote, collective right of the militia, which is fancy lawyer talk for a non-existent right. 
Had the dissenters prevailed, the result would have been the Second Amendment would effectively have been erased from the Bill of Rights. It would have meant that any state, any locality, or the federal government could pass a law making it a crime for you or me or anybody else to exercise our Second Amendment right to own even a single firearm. And we would not have had any judicial avenue to challenge that. This election turned on that question. And millions of Americans came out precisely to protect the Bill of Rights. When Justice Scalia's vacancy occurred, Mitch McConnell and Chuck Grassley and Republicans in the Senate, quite rightly, said we are going to hold this seat vacant and let the American people decide. That was the right thing to do. It was the principled thing to do. It made this election a referendum on the Supreme Court. The NRA, as an institution, played a critical role in mobilizing millions of Americans to protect the Constitution. Conservative leaders across this country spoke out. People like my friend Jim DeMint, a strong, principled, conservative leader who's been fighting for our rights a long, long time. And when the election results came in, we heard a piercing wail of agony. As mainstream media reporters shrieked in horror because the American people had risen up and defied Washington, defied the mainstream media, defied the pundits, and had said, we will defend our Constitution and we will defend our freedom. To underscore what was at stake, one needs look no further than a recent decision from the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals. Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals used to be the most conservative court of appeals in the country, used to be a bastion of constitutional principle. But after eight years of Barack Obama, the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals has become a left-wing sinkhole. The Fourth Circuit just recently upheld Maryland's ban on so-called assault weapons and Maryland's ban on large-capacity magazines. And the test that the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals put out for the Second Amendment is they said the Second Amendment does not protect any weapons that might be useful in a military context. Now listen, that is not just legal interpretation. That is not just a reasonable position. There's a technical word for what that is. That is nuts. When the Second Amendment was drafted, it wasn't about hunting. Hunting is a lot of fun. In Texas, I, I enjoy hunting. Hunting is great. Target shooting is great fun. Second Amendment is not about target shooting either. The Second Amendment, the reason it is in the Bill of Rights, is the Second Amendment reflects the fundamental right of each and every one of us to defend our homes and our families and our children from anyone that would seek to do them harm. And the Second Amendment was also designed as a check on government tyranny. That an armed citizenry is a free and independent citizenry empowered to defend our fundamental liberties. You know, you think back to the time of the founding. A musket was pretty darn militarily useful. It's what everyone carried into combat, was a musket. Anyone know the first gun control laws in the United States? First Congress passed a law mandating that every able-bodied man must own a musket.
that's gun control founding father stuff. Now, the reason they wanted you to have a musket was precisely because it is useful in a military context to defend yourself, to defend your, your family against those seeking to do you harm. The Second Amendment, under, under the Four Circuits test, it only protects things that would be useless in a military context. Apparently, the Second Amendment is all about protecting your right to own a feather duster. That's just one example of how the courts and judicial activism are undermining our basic rights. This election, let me say, when President Trump nominated Neil Gorsuch to the Supreme Court, President Trump honored his promise and commitment to the American people. Although that vacancy was at best defensive. It's essentially a status quo vacancy. Justice Scalia, we ain't getting better than Justice Scalia. I believe very soon we're going to see another vacancy. I think the odds are significant that we'll see another vacancy either this summer or next summer. And let me tell you, when that vacancy happens, that is the potential to change the balance of power on the court. Now, I fully expect that the Democrats are going to go to war to stop the next Supreme Court nominee. Fortunately, we know the Democrats won't use anything that's useful in a military context. So maybe they will go to war with their feather dusters. But this next vacancy, I hope and pray that President Trump continues to honor his promise to nominate principled constitutionalists who will ferociously defend the Bill of Rights. And when that happens, it will be incumbent on all of us, each and every one of us, to inform, to educate, to, to, educate, to mobilize the American people that the only way we defend our liberties is if we stand up and fight to protect the Bill of Rights and the Constitution. This election was a momentous election. The stakes could not have been higher. And I am here today to say to everyone here, congratulations and thank you for your passion pulling this country back from the brink and protecting our freedoms for our children and our children's children. Thank you and God bless you.